Welcome back, guys, to a, another Falcon Winter Soldier episode four recap reaction video. I'm Jake Ellenbogen, the host of the Jake Ellenbogen channel here. Uh, before we get into it, our partners are Manscaped. You can go over to manscaped.com today. Use promo code JKB and get 20% off and free shipping off your manscaped.com order. Uh, I do appreciate anybody that heads on over there. I appreciate them so much. They are great. Uh, but before we get into it, I do want to have a disclaimer. If you guys don't want to have this spoiled, do not finish this video. Don't even continue on after this. I appreciate you guys so much for trying to support me, but I do not want to blow this. This is a huge, huge, huge episode. It is unprecedented in Disney history. The ending is so dark and is so unlike Disney that you would not expect it. I wasn't expecting it to be ever shown on Disney+, Plus, but that is why you need to back out now. You need to experience it for yourself. You need to be in the moment because you don't want that taken away by some guy on YouTube spoiling it for you. So that is my disclaimer here. If you skip past this, I'm sorry. You'll probably look back and be like, wow, I wish I saw the disclaimer. But I appreciate you guys. I won't be offended if you guys leave. I just don't want this spoiled for you. So that's that. So we move into it. Wakanda intro six years ago, showing AO testing the Hydra uh, control codes, uh, control words on Bucky and having it not work. And I love the way this starts off because basically it shows you this is they've they've had some history. You know, we take place. It's a little bit after uh, episode three ending. Uh, you know, it takes place after that th that uh, flashback. But the flashback's huge. It shows the connection between Ao and uh, Winter Soldier, um, Bucky Barnes. So that's a big point. Now we go back to the present day after that, and we do see that Ao and Bucky are talking. Uh, Ao basically makes it clear the Dora Milaje are going to come and take Zemo. He has eight hours to do whatever he needs to a Zemo. Then they will take him back to Wakanda to face trial uh, for the killing of King T'Chaka. Now, I thought they did a nice job of setting this up in episode three because I haven't really heard <clears throat> King T'Chaka's name mentioned much. And it was very quick for uh, Sam Wilson to mention, in case you didn't forget, the Wakandans did not forget that Zemo killed King T'Chaka. So bailing him out is not going to be the best course of action. He told Bucky that, and now here it is. Here's the payoff. So what we see here, Sam Wilson is in the building, uh, which we left him off at at the end of episode three with Zemo, trying to talk to him about reasoning with Carly Morgenthau, kind of trying to change the plan a little bit here. Uh, Zemo is absolutely against this. He calls her a supremacist and basically says that she's too far gone. Uh, he does appreciate that Sam is trying to reason with her and he understands his place. But Zemo saying, I've seen this before. He, she is too far gone. She is a supremacist. She's like the Avengers, the Nazis, so forth. Keep in mind, I don't think the Avengers are Nazis, but Zemo does. Zemo thinks everybody is in that bucket. All super soldiers, all godlike figures are supremacists and should not exist. That is Zemo. That's his code. And he sticks to that. <clears throat> that's a big component as we move on in this episode you will see that so we move on uh carly she bombed that building of civilians in in episode three and that makes radio waves uh we hear it over the radio about how the flag smashers are now a wanted uh and, and scared and feared organization uh people don't believe in them as much anymore there's a lot of infamy that, you know that that came with that and as we saw in that episode three her partner didn't exactly agree with that. She says this is the language that the the only language that people understand when people die, things along that nature. So he wasn't in, in fully agreement with that. And as you can kind of see, the flag smashers aren't as bad. They're not truly evil the way it's depicted. And there there wasn't really an evil thing that they did until they blew up that building. And that was really all Carly. So we move on from that and we see. Uh, that Sam, Bucky, and Zemo have decided to split up and find Donya Madani, who was the mother figure of that whole society of the Flag Smashers, uh, that, that whole community. And they want to find where she is going to have her funeral and where what time is going to be the funeral. And the reason for this is because they've agreed on a plan to allow Sam to reason with Carly Morgenthau. They know it's not 100% going to work, but they want to try it. They feel like Sam has that background. He'll mention later on uh, that he counseled uh, soldiers from the war. He knows he can reason. He's had loss. It makes sense, right? So uh, neither of them have luck. 
uh, Sam and Bucky, but Zemo does. And this is this goes to show you it further, you know, puts together the whole point. Zemo is a very, very, very important character, and he's very useful, and that's the thing. And you'll also see that mentioned later on, how Sam believes he's more useful than John Walker is. So as we move on, uh, Zemo, kind of a callback to Narnia, the line, the witch in the wardrobe, when the White Witch uses Turkish delights to entice Edmund to get him to do what she wants. He does the same thing for a little girl in the streets to find out where Donia Madani's uh, funeral is being held. I do like this. I dig the callback. I'm not a fan of Turkish Delight, personally, but I am a fan of that little callback there. Narnia came out, or rather, The Lion, the, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe came out in, I believe, 2005. Uh, so, you know, it's always cool to see that. Uh, I grew up watching movies like that, so a uh, nice callback there. But Zemo does get the information with the Turkish Delights. Now, he also says... You see those guys over there talking about Bucky and Sam. Those guys are bad. Now, I know a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, this is Zemo's turn. Oh, my God. Eye roll moment, right? Well, here's the thing. Zemo is doing this entirely for leverage. He knows if he has them get the location and the time, he doesn't really have any leverage, and they can let him go to the Dora Milaje or, or whoever. So this is his way of keeping leverage. Obviously, they're not very happy with it. Sam makes a call to Sharon Carter, who's still in Madripoor, basically saying, we need extra eyes on us. We don't feel comfortable. Could be a John Walker situation. Could be a Dora Milaje situation. Could be anybody, Flag Smashers, whatever. But he's he makes that call, and that's important. That gets paid off later in the show uh, about having satellite uh, protection and having an idea of who's around. So we get that. And essentially, after that, we get a um, we get a Flag Smasher member and Carly Morgenthau, and they are at the gravesite of the Flag Smasher member's grandfather. That is actually where they're hiding the vials of the Super Soldier Serum they stole. Now, the Flag Smasher member here, uh, he kind of shows you that these people aren't that bad. They're really not evil. Carly, she had her moment there, and I don't condone blowing up buildings. But you can see that they're not Thanos level. They're not a Galactus. They're not General Zod evil. I had to bring Zod up. I don't know why. But my point is that he kind of adds humility to his character in this scene because he he talks to Carly and he says, you know, my grandfather fought Nazis, so I don't think he was a bad guy. I thought he was a hero and how he grew up as a Captain America fan. And now he doesn't feel like he recognizes the Cap anymore because Cap in this timeline in at this point in time is not what Steve Rogers was, and anybody could tell you that. So he likens Carly Morgenthau, who's fighting for a good fight, and keep him in his mind, he thinks he's fighting for the good fight, and he's fighting the right way. Carly Morgenthau, he, he likens her to Captain America. She quickly shuts that down and says, there shouldn't be a Captain America. We should absolutely destroy the shield. The shield is the problem. And I tend to somewhat agree with her in a sense, but not destroy it, just kind of give it to somebody else. Of course, you know where I'm going with that. So uh, we then move on right after that scene. We Before we even transition, you hear John Walker's bright, vibrant voice played by Wyatt Russell, who has done a phenomenal job as John Walker, uh, who's gotten death threats, who shouldn't be getting death threats. Can we stop that? If you're one of those people, stop doing that. That's not really cool. Uh, anyway. John Walker and Battlestar have tracked down Bucky, Sam, and Zemo. And Walker's loud. And this is a this is a thing I like. It kind of shows you the difference between heroes that have been there, done that. You know the whole term, act like you've been there before? You notice Zemo is not a hero, right? But like he's acting like he's been there before. He's very discreet. You know, he's got his trench coat, all of that. But more importantly, Sam and Bucky are very quiet, right? They're not loud and vibrant, and they don't have that loud personality. John Walker is loud. He is not acting like he's been there before. He's walking all around this new country, pretty much wearing a flag saying, hey, I'm American, and saying whatever he wants. He's talking about this whole city who they these people believe is the biggest hero in their lives right now, Carly Morgenthau. He's talking about taking her down, like loud in the city. So that's something to keep in mind here. Uh, I do like that dynamic that they use uh, because he's not being discreet. The plan in the moment, as we know, is to get Sam to meet with Carly and basically hash out their differences and try to figure out a way to accomplish what she wants to accomplish without there being any more bloodshed. 
That's pretty much the whole thing. He's just trying to reason with Carly and get to a good conclusion. This further shows you that Sam Wilson is way more equipped to be Captain America than John Walker is. This is what Steve Rogers would want. He would want the fewest casualties. And another person that also wants the the fewest casualties is Lamar Hoskins, Battlestar, who is John Walker's best friend. I like his character because he feels truly conflicted he's his best friend he wants to support him but there's a lot of times where you feel like hoskins isn't cool with what john walker wants or what he's saying um we've already seen walker kind of slowly unravel uh each episode so this is an interesting point uh especially with his guy lamar choosing sam's idea over john walker's so at this moment uh sam is going to get to carly John Walker doesn't agree with it at all. And then eventually they agree with it. Fine. John says you have 10 minutes. So they get to the building where the funeral is held. Carly notices Sam in a window upstairs and she continues on with the the funeral. They end the funeral. Everyone leaves except for Carly. Carly and Sam have a heart to heart. They start talking. He kind of everything that he suspected He starts to realize, I think this is a good plan. We're doing well here. We're making progress. So he talks to her kind of in a way, like more low-key, like, ah, come on, you're better than that. You're not a supremacist. But in reality, she is acting like a supremacist. And he does a really nice job of kind of, you know, shedding light on the fact, I don't feel like you're this way, but this is how you're doing it. And he's like, basically, I agree with your thought process. I don't agree with how you are deciding to do it. I can fight what i can understand your fight i can't understand the way you're fighting it and that is a big key here and again shows you the captain america uh you know the validity behind him being captain america of course things are going too well so you know john walker comes in and ruins the whole moment we get a a chase scene here carly's gone she feels betrayed by sam because sam did say he came alone and john walker broke that trust thereby showing up and trying to arrest her in a way that was really kind of stupid by john walker it was actually very stupid uh so we do see that whole thing go down now what i will say is that this is a huge scene and it needed to happen, of course, because one, we all, we all knew it was going to happen. But the big thing here is that Zemo was actually uh, handcuffed to a boiler machine by John Walker in that waiting room that they were waiting in. When they went in to intercept that, or rather John Walker went in to intercept their meeting and try to take Morgenthau down, it allowed Zemo to escape behind the scenes. Now, everybody starts chasing each other, but here's what ends up happening. Morgenthau gets away until Zemo shoots her three times. He shoots her three times. She drops the case of vials that she stole from the power broker. And what ends up happening here is Zemo sticks to his code, as we talked about. Zemo stomps on the vials. He destroys all the vials in that scene. There's one vial that is not shown in that scene that has gone away kind of in a crevice. And that is exactly what John Walker's going to see after he hits Zemo over the head with his shield, knocking him out. He gets the vial and he's going to hide it in his pocket. So when eventually you're going to have Lamar, you're going to have Sam and you're going to have Bucky all catch up and be like, what did we miss? And John Walker does take the serum. So this is a big, big point in the episode, big point in the show Uh, that this even happens and this vial is huge this is the last vial uh, since Zemo destroyed them all again I like that he did that because he stuck instead of taking it he stuck to his character stuck to his code didn't take the vial and decided to destroy it that's why I like Zemo no matter how bad he really is he's always going to stick by what he believes in and isn't just going to go off the beaten path Uh, so that's something to keep in mind but the thing here is that we go back to Zemo's uh, well, Zemo's estate. But before we do that, we actually get a cut here. Carly Morgenthau is being patched up. She has survived the bullet wounds. She's being patched up by her uh, Flag Smasher friends. Her Flag Smasher friends read a text, basically saying the power broker is pissed, and he is also going to need those vials back, or he's going to kill every single one of you. Carly kind of 
dismisses it. She says, we'll deal with the power broker when we do. And this is kind of a common theme showing you there's going to be two wars fought at once. Uh, and she's not on good terms with the power broker. But then we cut over to uh, Zemo, who is actually in his estate. And he's basically asking Sam after holding his head because he has a headache from getting hit over the head by the shield. And he's asking Sam straight up if he has ever taken the or has ever been offered the uh, super soldier serum and if he'd ever take it. This is interesting because Sam, again, is exhibiting Captain America here by not saying he would and really not wasting any time in saying that he would take it. He says no and no. Zemo appreciates this. And you can see there's some, some sort of respect from Zemo realizing that, hey, this Falcon guy isn't like the rest. I like this guy a lot, and, uh, you know, it's definitely interesting to know that. Now, what we do is we're going to go back to this estate, as we've shown. Uh, what's going to happen here is Sam is actually going to email Sharon Carter, and he's going to tell her to look, keep an eye on John Walker. Now, as this whole scene uh, progresses, we see a Bucky come through the door and say, there's something wrong with John Walker. There's something not right about John Walker, right? Right on cue, and he says that because he's crazy, he knows when he sees crazy. Right on cue, John Walker kicks open the door and basically orders them to give Zemo to them. Now, we don't know how many hours have gone by. I don't know if it was eight. It could have been. But either way, the Dora Milaje are not very happy, and they're not going to be patient. And they come in after hearing that, and they basically say it's time. Give up Zemo. AO says this has been eight hours. So I don't know if they're bluffing or not, but apparently it had been eight hours. So what we see here is the Dora Milaje aren't going to take no for an answer. John Walker also is kind of being Mr. Hotshot since he has the Captain America gear. He's going to say, you don't have jurisdiction here. The Dora Milaje are basically going to reply with saying, we have jurisdiction wherever the Dora Milaje feel they, they have uh, jurisdiction. So that's a big key here and basically shows you that John Walker is being outclassed in every way. He doesn't know this yet, but he's not anywhere near their fighting style. Another thing he doesn't notice before they go into this fight is that the Dora Milaje are one of the most powerful warriors. They might be the most powerful warrior group in the, uh, the on the planet. And that it, it doesn't matter if they're super soldiers, they will beat you senseless. And he takes this very personally when he gets dominated and embarrassed by the Dora Milaje. And that's what happens. We get a really cool fight scene, but it's a huge cliche. We see the guy that they were there to capture and take away, run away under everyone's nose, El Chapo style, through the sewers. That's Zemo. He gets away. We don't see him the rest of the episode. And uh, we don't know if we'll see him in the next episode. I'm assuming we'll definitely see him in episode six. I don't know if we'll see him in five. It would be a bummer. I think he is a highlight of the show. I think he's great. Uh, so I'm hoping he comes back. Uh, but again, really cool fight sequence. It's just very cliche. Of course, I had to throw that in there. Bucky and Sam are watching Walker and Hoskins get obliterated. Hoskins might die. And Walker is getting just manhandled. And You'll hear Bucky say, you know, hey, nice job, Walker. Like, you know, they're really kind of having some fun with this, or rather Bucky is. But Sam, being that Captain America, being the better man, you know, leading by example, is not okay with this. And he's saying, Bucky, we, we got to get involved here. We got to, you know, I know you don't want to get into a fight with, you know, allies, but we can't let them kill him. And so that's exactly what happens. Now, what that leads to is the whole what we give to you can be taken. AO actually deactivates Bucky's vibranium arm during this. <clears throat> this is a huge moment because it kind of shows a little bit of a betrayal, both from Bucky and AO. So we kind of created this early on in the episode, this dynamic that they really care for each other. They had this connection, very important connection. But AO also says, if you wrong me, I will take your arm. And so she does that. And, that was a huge moment in this fight. And basically, again, it shows you whatever we give you can be taken back. Now, they leave. Bucky, or not Bucky, Zemo is gone. So again, the cliche of, well, we came here to take this guy. This guy escapes. We kind of knew that was happening. I mean, this is Zemo after all. 
Walker is absolutely defeated after this fight. In every meaning of the word defeated. He looks so depressed, and he says they weren't even super soldiers to Lamar Hoskins. This is one of the final straws to break the camel's back because we do know that he has the vial. We didn't know if he took the super soldier serum yet until we saw him get manhandled by the Dora Milaje. And then we'll get a plain clothes scene uh, with Hoskins and Walker. And straight up, they're going to talk a little bit about their history, about what they did in the war, all of that. But he's going to ask Hoskins, if you had the super soldier serum and you could take it, would you? Hoskins says, hells yeah. And what he means by that, it's not about being... Hoskins isn't a egomaniac like John Walker. Hoskins immediately is starting to refer this to how many people they could have saved in the war. Now, John Walker kind of gets clumped into thinking that and being the hero... But in a sense, John Walker's kind of just agreeing with Hoskins, maybe to make it look like he is the hero and in denial. So that play and close scene, just how they're just chilling out there in public, it's a big deal because that's the final nail in the coffin. John Walker's going to take this serum. So he takes the serum. But before we get into that, Carly is going to call Sam's sister. This is a big moment because Carly is going to threaten Sam's sister and Sam's nephews so Sam can go and talk with her in person again. This is showing that Carly obviously isn't going to do anything to Sam's uh, relatives. But what Carly wants is Sam alone because she feels as though Sam and her did have a good conversation. She did believe in him that technically he isn't working with John Walker and that she feels that he could be on to something. So, basically, what that all leads to is they have a nice conversation. Again, very short, but it's a nice one. It's going well. They're going to make progress, even though he brought Bucky, and she said to come alone. The big problem here is that Sharon, who is uh, basically monitoring that satellite that we talked about, we get a payoff on the satellite. And essentially, she says that John Walker... Something's going on with John Walker. He's, you know, attacking the Flag Smasher, something along those lines. Well, unfortunately, Bucky and Sam have to go. Then Carly feels like she's being betrayed again. She also has this idea in her head. She wants to kill Captain America, which is John Walker. So this is a big point in this episode here. Walker and Hoskins are attacking a Flag Smasher run building here. But what's going to end up happening is that Hoskins is going to be taken hostage. This puts John in a really weird spot. John has already taken the Super Soldier Serum, and we see that as he bends a pipe in half. A steel pipe in half. He throws the shield through the wall, and it sticks. So we know that he's taken the serum. But Hoskins is captured, and he's not liking it. So he goes around, and he's beating on some guys. And then we get to uh, Falcon and, you know, the Winter Soldier and Carly and Morgenthau have all arrived at this building. They are able to hold John Walker in a way to allow Carly Morgenthau, who has her knife, to pull it out and stab John Walker. This is all the plan. They're trying to kill Captain America. Unfortunately, Lamar Hoskins jumps in, tackles Carly Morgenthau. She gets him off him, and then she punches him, and he goes flying into a pillar and breaks his neck. This is a really tough scene because I really like Lamar Hoskins. I like his character. Really big fan of... Uh, Battlestar. I felt like he really had potential in this universe, but apparently he's gone, which is just a shame. But I think they did this for a reason. They did this because I think more and more, this episode showed you the difference between a Steve Rogers Captain America and John Walker Captain America. Steve Rogers lost Bucky kind of brutally in that kind of collateral damage like way. He watched Bucky fall to his death, so to speak. We know that didn't happen. But the thing with that is that Bucky, he like with that, he didn't he didn't go off the deep end. John Walker loses Hoskins, and the first thing he does is go off the deep end. He chases down that flag smasher uh 
that grandson that we saw early on, he chases him down to the mid the you know the middle of the city, the the square of it all. And he kills him in cold blood. This is awful. It's awful because John Walker one honestly didn't kill the person that killed Hoskins. He didn't get revenge. Two, this episode's actually called The World is Watching. The whole world is watching. And we find out at the end exactly why. Because everybody has their smartphones out. And now the whole world just saw Captain America, that huge symbol, maybe the biggest symbol in the MCU, that shield that represents so much for everyone, that was covered in blood for the first time ever. Steve Rogers never did anything like that. So we get a John Walker turn. He goes straight up Homelander on this guy. If you guys don't know, I actually just watched The Boys. I might do a video on it. It's one of the best TV shows I've ever seen, and I just saw it like three days ago. So very much love that show, and that's the connection I'm making. It's crazy enough. I hadn't seen it until this week, and then I saw that, and the first thing I thought is, wow, that's like The Boys. The only thing is you didn't see guts showing, like flying up and everything. But the thing about this moment is that it's also really sad because the grandson made it very clear in that one scene with Carly Morgenthau that he loved Captain America growing up. That was his hero. But a warped version of Captain America, a a you know, a faux Captain America is what ended up killing him and it was the same shield that he grew up loving. So that's something it just adds so much more tear jerking potential to this scene. And this scene to me I was just shocked it was on Disney Plus, but I think it needs to be. I think they filmed this in a way to really make it no way in hell that John Walker gets out of this. He could. And I think he he ultimately will in a sense that he will become US agent like the comics. But if you think that he's going to remain Captain America for the rest of this show, I think that went to hell in a handbasket. Did they need to kill Lamar Hoskins? I don't know. I really liked his character. I thought they could have, you know, Battlestar and U.S. Agent have a decent run in the comics. They have some serious missions that they go on. So kind of a bummer about that. But I do think that they really wanted to have that parallel and show you. Because in case you forgot, Steve Rogers was friggin' awesome. That's what they're, I feel like that's what they keep trying to push on us. By using the same guy and the same, you know, having the same shield, similar costume is not the same guy that wore that costume first. And so this to me leads to uh, Sam Wilson eventually, as we all expected, becoming Captain America. And I think we're going to get Bucky as White Wolf. I don't know when that's going to happen. Um, but this is going to have major, major implications. And sees in episode five, we do know that there's going to be a cameo. It's been discussed. There's going to be a cameo. It's a big deal. Now, with this cameo, I have two guesses because it's supposedly a big a big Marvel character that we haven't seen yet, hasn't been introduced, and it's a big actor. So I don't know who's going to be the actor for either of these. My guess is that the two guesses I'm doing, Frank Castle, The Punisher, just because I feel like they could go with the guy from the Netflix show. And I also feel like the Punisher is a big character. It's not a, he's not a huge character, but he's a character. Um, and I don't know how they would do it, but they could do the Punisher. And then the other guess is Reed Richards. Because the Fantastic Four, even though most of this has really been X-Men teasing, the Madripoor thing, very X-Men teasing... Fantastic Four is confirmed. Like, we we know that the movie is already coming out. They have a plan for it. And Reed Richards, if he was played by John Krasinski, to me, that's the most perfect fit for him, then that would be a huge scene. I've also seen a video out there, a performer, I forget who put it out, might have been Everything Always, uh, which is a great channel. You should check them out. Um, but... Michael Roman in On Everything Always, I think he's the one that said this, put out a video saying that he thinks the performer could be Rihanna. And 
the way it was set up, it was that it was a performer. It was a famous performer. So they could be like an artist. Um, it might not even be an actor. When you say performer, I kind of think of Hugh Jackman, but I don't know. Like I, I have a really hard time believing that this is going to be Wolverine or X-Men related. I think they're staying away from that for a reason. There are other guys out there. It could be, I mean, the, it, the problem is, is that what it was called, it does limit because we haven't seen the character yet. I mean, would we see a, a Keanu Reeves as like Namor or somebody like that? Or that's the thing. Like, I, I don't know, but if I'm going to guess, I'm going to say Frank Castle, the guy that plays him in uh, Netflix on Netflix, because I think a lot of people like him or it's going to be Reed Richards played by John Krasinski. The Rihanna thing though, makes sense, but I just like, who would she play? I think we're running out of like top notch female characters because People don't realize like Photon being introduced, uh, you know, Monica Rambeau. That's one of the like the top female characters. Then you have Sue Storm, maybe. But I, I just think Sue Storm would be introduced after Reed Richards is introduced or she would just be in the Fantastic Four movie. There's not a ton of female characters left. That would be huge. So who would Rihanna play? Storm? I think they shy away from the X-Men in the series. Uh, we already got confirmation it's not going to be um, King T'Challa. And what I'll say on that is that I agree with that move because I do think the way it was put is that we didn't want it to be like, tune in next week to see King T'Challa, see Black Panther. And I agree. That's that's very, it's tasteless. It, it's a, you know, losing Chadwick Boseman is really tough. You don't want to make it like a money grab about his death, you know? So I do think we'll get a proper send off probably in in Black Panther 2 or maybe we won't. I don't know, but it's not going to come in this. And I don't even know if we're going to see much of Wakanda after this, but maybe we will. Who knows? There's two episodes left. There's a lot of uh stuff to work out. I think we're going to get the addition of the Thunderbolts at the end of this series. Um this is going to tie into Black uh yeah, Black Widow. Um, Black Widow came before it, but Black Widow is going to tie into this, which ultimately puts it all together. Will we get Red Hulk at the end? Doubt it. But I think this is leading towards Red Hulk. I think we will get the Thunderbolts, and I think we will get Baron Zemo being a big time uh, character moving forward in the MCU. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. This has been a, a fun show to break down. Uh, we're through episode four. Episode four felt to me like had the most action. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on that, but it felt it had the most action. It wasn't, it, they weren't the best action scenes, but one thing I'll, I'll take away is I like that they've taken away the gun usage. I'm not like anti guns. That's not why I'm asking to take away the gun usage. But what I enjoy is like the intimacy in a movie in an action movie of CQC close quarter combat. And I think they've already pointed this out that they wanted it to be more close quarter combat because they're more dynamic fighting scenes go back and, and watch sharon carter's fighting scene in episode three and tell me those that fighting scene wasn't as good wasn't better than the shooting scene after the rpg takes out uh you know that research lab and then they're on the run because i'll tell you all day i'll take cqc john wick style combat any day of the week over car chases and shootouts. I think that they are the most overrated thing in action movies. I'm sorry. I know people will probably disagree with me. Lay off some steam, Bennett, right? Uh, we also got that in episode three. A little bit of a callback to that one. Uh, I forget. I think it was Winter Soldier through the pipe through that, uh, that lady's uh, shoulder socket. So that's my thoughts on that. Can't wait for episode five. Can't wait for this cameo. Let me know who you think is going to the cameo down below. And be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, hit that like button. It helps me out, helps the algorithm out, and allows me to keep pumping out this content but finding more people. I want to grow this community. This is a sports and entertainment channel. It's mainly football and MCU, if you want to be honest, but I'm not going to shy away from making the boys video. I'm not going to shy away from making uh, DC stuff. I'm not going to shy away from movie reviews as I've done before. Uh, just really excited for the future of this channel, really excited for my community, and I just want to keep building it. So you can follow me 
at JK Bogan DTSN. You can uh, subscribe, like, and drop a comment. Helps a lot. Appreciate you guys so much. I will be back soon with sports content as well, but I'm also going to be doing like we've been doing with the weekly, I'm going to be doing a recap and review of Falcon Winter Soldier episode five and six, and then we'll preview Loki a little bit. We're going to be doing the same thing with Loki. We'll do the same thing with What If. We'll do the same thing with Hawkeye, uh, Miss Marvel, all of that. I want it all. So I'm really excited to you know have this journey with you guys. But again, that that's just me signing off. You guys take care and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Later.